Frank Lovejoy in... Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. Chicago's that big town in Illinois, you know, the one with the king-sized hangover. We're doing a pretty good job of putting the hotels back together and airing out the amphitheater and sweeping up the rubble of the disputed delegation. But don't get any ideas about starting a demonstration. We're still a little edgy. Yes, our town is exhausted, maybe even a little disillusioned. The big story's over. And we're long on heat and humidity and short on tempers. I just walked in off the street, leaving my footprints forever seared in the concrete. The city room was a full degree cooler and 20% darker. By the time my eyes adjusted, I could see Gil Lovett, the sports editor, reading the final edition at his desk. No one else was around. It figured it was six in the evening. The day side of the staff had gone home to a cool drink. Oh, hi, Randy. Hi, Gail. How'd the Cubs do? I split the doubleheader. Uh, the Sox? Call rain in Boston. Well, let's go to Boston. Uh, Randy, you didn't have to read my column today, did you? You read mine? <laughs> well, no. Well, it's a standoff. Why? What's with your column? That's a crazy story I got mixed up in. Wait a minute, I'll read it to you. It's down here at the bottom. Maybe you can figure an angle on it. Beats me. That's funny. The last item of the column. It isn't here. Well, it's been hot. Maybe you imagine. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I saw the poof on it about noon today. It was in then. That is something goofy about it. Yeah, it sounds like. Ah, oh, hi, Dutch. Through for the day, huh? All through, Mr. Stone. Good night. Night, Dutch. Uh, wait a minute, Dutch. You have anything to do with this? Good night, Mr. Lovett. No, I, I said hold it. Don't bark your orders at me. Well, I'll bark plenty. You yanked that story out of my column, didn't you? After I saw the proof, you pulled the item out, didn't you? I told you not to print it, Mr. Lovett. And I told you it was none of your business. You stick to your composing room job. I handle the sports side. Then watch how you handle it. What you print for, well, you crazy old fool. I'll break your neck. Take it easy, Gil. Oh, don't frighten me, you brave young man. Dutch, put down that paperweight. I'll put it all on his head. Hey, Dutch! <sighs> Mr. Stone. You stay out of this, Randy. I'll handle it. Now leave him alone. Now come on, the both of you. Bring it up. I don't know what the beef is, but this won't settle it. What he brings. It is very wrong. Uh, you cockeyed. Innocent people can be hurt by it. You will do no good and very much harm. Okay, okay, okay. You better go on home, Dutch. I'll go home, Mr. Stone. But you should not interfere. Sometimes it is very dangerous to interfere. Yeah, yeah. Good night, Dutch. Don't do it again, Mr. Stone. Well, okay, Gil. What's it all about? <laughs> you know, that guy would have killed me. You know that? He was pretty sore. I've never seen him like that. Yeah. Devil of it is, I like old Dutch, but he's way off base pulling a story of mine out of my column. What is this story? Well, uh, I'm just kid, see? And I, I still don't figure Dutch in it anywhere, but... It... Point killer. Yeah. Whose phone is it? Oh, it's mine. Wait, will you? I want you in on this. Sports desk, Lovett. Oh, yeah, Denny. He's there now? Hello? Yeah, you you bet I will. Yeah, thanks. I'll be right over. I'll be doggone. Well, okay, now, so there's this kid. Now, what about him? That call. <laughs> I'll do better than tell you about it. I'll show you about it. Come on. It was Gil's story. I figured I'd let him tell it his way. But I kept thinking about old Dutch Hillbrand. He'd been a mainstay in the composing room for years, a lovable old guy. What made him heave the paperweight at Gill? And how could an item in a sports column drive him to it? Well, ten minutes later, we'd parked the car and entered the swimming stadium where the regional Olympic trials had been held. The stadium itself was empty, and no one was in the pool except the kid in blue trunks up by the diving board. He looked to be maybe 15 years old, and he was going through some limbering up exercises. Gil motioned me into a first row seat and shoved a stopwatch into my hand. Here, you'll want this. Will I? When that kid down there starts his swim, start your watch. I'll keep one on him, too. Sure, why not? If it proves something. It will. Who tipped you he was here? Denny Kahn, swimming coach at the stadium. Yeah. 
Kid's about ready now. Watch it. What is this, the story? This is part of it. I don't know much about championship swimming. I didn't have to to see that this kid was cutting that water fast with a powerful stroke. I kept my eyes on him, except to notice that Gil watched only the stopwatch he held. That's it, Crockett. Ah, I got 56 seconds flat. How about you, Randy? Ooh, 56 flat. What distance was that? 100 meters. And that 56 flat is a full second and four tenths off the 52 Olympic record. Yeah, he's better that once, too. He had 54 and a half a few weeks back. What? Well, well, who is the kid? If he's so good, why isn't he in Helsinki? Well, his name's Pete, but that's all I know. No last name. He's never with any kids his age or, or anyone. How'd he do in the Olympic trials? He wouldn't even enter them. He could have beat out the best of them. He was a cinch with the team, but he wouldn't try out. Well, maybe he doesn't like competition. Maybe he just likes to swim. No, he's competed in some pickup competitions here. That's how Denny got a line on him in the first place. He showed up for the Olympic trials, too, but all he'd do was sit there in the stadium and watch. No, Randy, something else kept him from entering the trials. I'm convinced he wanted a spot on the Olympic team more than anything. And this is the story you printed, the one Dutch pulled from the column? Yeah, this is it. Well, I don't get it. What's Dutch's connection with this Pete kid? I don't know. He won't talk about the kid even. All he says is that printing the story will hurt innocent people. Ever ask the kid about Dutch? No, but I've asked him a lot of other things. He won't talk either. Well, let's ask him about Dutch, see what happens. Okay. He's a good-looking kid. Yeah, he is. I always have a feeling that he'd like to make friends, too, but something keeps him from it. Think you'll stop swimming long enough to talk? <laughs> I don't plan on anything. Hey! Pete! Hmm? Oh, Mr. Lovett. Hello. Hi. I'd like to have you meet a friend of mine, Pete. This is Randy Stone. Oh, oh. Hi, Pete. I just watched you swim. You look great. Oh, thanks. Uh, how was the time? Or did you notice? <laughs> 56 flat. Oh? Well, that's not bad, I guess. Nobody at Helsinki touched it. Well, I'm glad you liked it, Mr. Stone. Pete, uh, I wonder if you happen to know a friend of mine who works on the star, Dutch Hillbrand. Well, I don't know anybody. Sure you don't know Dutch? He's a fine old guy. No, I don't know him. Look, leave me alone, will you? Just please leave me alone. What? Wait, wait a minute. Pete, we want to help you. Well, you going to leave him alone or swim after him? Ah, uh, the devil with him. Gil and I headed back to the star. He was doing a real slow burn act. We were both doing a lot of thinking. I never heard of an American kid or any other kind of kid, for that matter, who'd pass up a chance to go to the Olympics. There has to be a good reason. Whatever the reason was, it had something to do with old Dutch Hillbrand. Why would the old man care? What was it to him? Randy, I think I'll go up to the office with you and uh, call Farley. What can Farley do about it? I'll can fire him. Oh, come on. Hold on a minute. You don't want to get old Dutch fired. He's a sweet guy. He's an old... Yeah, sure. He's great. But he can't go pulling stuff out of my column and get by with it. That's all. You let a thing like this get out of hand? Yeah, and... I know. Look, Gil, you're right. Old Dutch hasn't any business doing what he did. And it also isn't like him to do it. Dutch is too good a newspaper man to pull a stunt like that unless he was desperate. Well, what do you want me to do? Forget it? No. No, of course not. But why don't I go to Dutch? Maybe he'll talk to me. Told you to stay out of it. Yeah, I know, but uh, I don't believe him. I suppose he won't talk to you. Well, you can go to Farley or do whatever you want to do about it. I'll call you at home as soon as I know anything. As far as I knew, Dutch Hillbrand had lived at the same address he'd had ever since he came to the store. I played poker out there a couple of times when Mama Dutch was living. I didn't see him often now, but I knew what kind of a guy Dutch was. He wasn't a violent guy by nature. And if he risked his job and the chance of ever getting another newspaper job, there was something pretty big behind it. I knocked a long time before anyone answered. Yes? What is it? I'm looking for Dutch Hillburn. Is he home? Why, who are you, may I ask? I'm Randy Stone. I'm a friend of his. Who are you? It isn't important who I am. Dutch is not here. He isn't, huh? You know, <laughs> you look a lot like a youngster I saw a while ago. Boy, about... Fifteen. His name was Pete. Dutch is not here. I don't know where he is or when to expect him. Well, he'll probably come home sometime. I think I'll wait for him if you don't mind. 
But he may be quite late. I don't know any reason for you to wait for him. Well, it's a pretty important reason. It's important to Dutch or I wouldn't wait. You... You say you are a friend of this. I wouldn't be here if I weren't. This important reason you have for seeing him, waiting for him, you... You could tell me this? I could tell Dutch, that's all. I see. I don't know. Let him in, Abby. Papa. It's all right, Abby. I'll talk to Mr. Stone. You are sure, Papa? Don't worry, Abby. Come in, Mr. Stone. Thanks, Dutch. You sit down. Make yourself at home. I'll be with you in a moment. Sure, swell, Dutch. Come along, Abby. <laughs> Dutch and Abby disappeared through the far door. I looked around Dutch's living room. It was ordinary, neat in the Grand Rapids tradition. The only key to Dutch's character were the books on the shelves, row after row of the great books of the world, and Dutch had read them. I knew that. There were other books there, too, just a few of them that didn't seem to belong. Books on swimming, championship swimming. I reached for the nearest one on training and technique. As I opened it, something metallic fell to the floor. I reached down and picked it up. It was a gold medal. The inscription on it read, 11th Olympiad, 1936, Berlin, Germany. First place, special sprint swim, women's division. You have found something interesting, have you, Mr. Stone? Well, yes, uh, Dutch, I guess I have. I had to turn around to see Dutch. His face was quite intense. He himself was trembling, but the gun he held on me was steady. I would not like to, Mr. Stone. But if I have to, I will kill you. We return in just a moment to Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Now, back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. I've looked down the wrong end of an automatic a few times in my life, but I've never made a complete adjustment to it. Dutch's voice was quiet, but everything choked up behind it in a kind of controlled desperation. At that moment, if I made any kind of a move, I was a cinch for a chest full of lead. You should not have found the metal, Mr. Stone. You should not have come here in the first place. I warned you not to interfere. Well, everybody makes mistakes. Yours is a very serious one. You must see that. I don't see anything except that automatic in my face. I came here for one reason. To tell you you better make your peace with Gil about pulling that story from his column. If he goes to Farley about it, it'll probably cost you your job. And coming here, Mr. Stone, stumbling into the middle of this, will probably cost you your life. But why, Dutch? Why do you have to kill me? Why do you want to kill Gil? It's gone too far. I can't be responsible for what happens now. But, Dutch, this is crazy. What's wrong with me knowing about the Olympic medal? Who is this kid, Pete? What's he to you? And what's wrong with Gil printing a story about a kid who refused to try out for the Olympic Games? A story can do no good. Only a great harm. Well, you've said that, but that's all you've said. That's all I have to say, Mr. Stone. You know, this kind of thing spreads in the newspaper business, Dutch. No other paper would hire you if Farley fires you. That is also not important, Mr. Stone. Well, how about me? I'm not important either. But don't you see? I can't help what happens to you now. I don't want to. I, I would not have wished it this way. You are a friend. But some things are bigger than friends. Yes, and sometimes when you're in trouble, friends can help, Dutch. There is nothing you can do. Okay, so I can't help you. I can't help, so you've got to kill me. Dutch, it doesn't make sense. I don't want to kill you, Mr. Stone. Well, I don't want you to. But kill, Mr. No, let me think a while, Dutch. Let me think. I can't promise anything. Just let me think. Let me talk to him. Just you. Go now, Mr. Stone. Just go. And forget all you can. I called Gil and told him to meet me at the store. I couldn't forget much about old Dutch Hillbrand. I didn't know much, but I couldn't forget that something desperate drove him to threaten to kill me. The woman, Abby, and Pete, and the kid who looked like her were still unknown quantities. 
I told Gil about the Olympic gold medal. You sure it was the 36 Olympics? Yeah, it was in Berlin. The medal was for first place in the special sprint swim, women's division. Well, we can check all that right now. Yeah, yeah Olympic section. Uh, swimming, swimming. Swimming. Men's division. Ah, women's division. Uh, yeah, here it is. Special sprint swim, first place, Abby Hillbrand, Holland. That's it. Dutch called her Abby. She must be his daughter. He never mentioned having a daughter. Could be his wife, I guess. No, no, I know her. She's dead. Okay, so is his daughter. How about Peter? Well, Abby's son, maybe. They look a lot alike. Come on, let's check the morgue. There ought to be something on her if she won an Olympic title. Well, it's worth a try. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Hillbrand Abbey. Won gold medal in 1936 Olympics in Berlin at the age of 19. Gave up brilliant swimming career to marry Karl Kopeck, a Czechoslovakian official at that time attached to the Czech embassy in Amsterdam. June 25, 1937, gave birth to a son, Peter Kopeck, uh, resides in Prague, Czechoslovakia. So Pete's his mother's son. No wonder he's a swimming fool. He probably cut his teeth on her Olympic medal. Karl Kopeck, Kopeck. I've heard that name. Yeah, he's probably in the file, too. All right, he should be. Let's see. Where Kopeck? There he is. Kopeck Karl, official in the Ministry of Information, Prague, Czechoslovakia. Winner of Stalin Medal for promoting Soviet friendship throughout Czechoslovakia. Mm. Nice fellow. Yeah. So Pete couldn't compete for the American Olympic team because he isn't an American. I wish there was all there was to that story. Well, what do you mean? Well, Dutch didn't threaten to kill me because Pete's just an alien. He's the son of a red official. The good chance is Pete and Abby are in the country illegally. If it isn't that, it's something close to it. Why all the secrecy? Why the panic at being discovered? Hey, you're right. What do we do now? Well, let me see. We've got a great choice. We can sit on the information if our inside will stand it. Or we can call Reynolds at the FBI and let him take it from there. Yeah. Well, what about Dutch? That's the part that hurts. <laughs> We kicked it around, Gil and I, the pros and the cons, and such facts as we knew against our friendship for Dutch. I guess there aren't any easy decisions in a deal like that. But there is something called duty that's got to go ahead of personal sympathy. Reynolds was a good guy and a smart one. I had to know more than I did. I had to be sure. I called Reynolds. Sure, we know about her. Abby Hillbrand Kopeck. She and her son Peter made an illegal entry into the country several years ago. Probably from Mexico. Uh, we're not certain on that. She works in bakeries in various places under various names. When we move in, she moves out. Well, how does she travel? Last time, she rented a car and abandoned it. If you caught up with her, have you any, uh, well, any beef with her except the illegal entry? We don't need a lot more than that. You'll probably deport her, huh? Uh, her and the kid? Well, that depends. The immigration authorities would have to hear a case. She'd be given a chance to talk. We don't railroad them. Depends on the merit of each individual case. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, Reynolds, I can give you a line on her, but first I want to fill you in on some things. I filled Reynolds in on the whole story, everything I knew about it, that is. Gil checked out of it and went home. Not long after that, I met Reynolds in front of Dutch's house. I didn't want to be a part of it, and I didn't want not to be. I've been here a while. There's not a light in the place. You been up there? I was waiting for you. All right, let's try it. Okay. Well, all the shades are drawn. They could still be here. Dodge! Dodge! It's Randy Stone! I think they beat it. Even from the outside, you can tell when a house is empty. I guess you're right. But Dutch doesn't have a car. If they're really running, I doubt they'd trust friends or public transportation. I wonder, you don't suppose she'd try that car rental deal again? You worked for her last time. There's a car rental agency a few blocks from here. We can check it. Okay, let's go. Uh, Reynolds, uh, running away like this, 
Doesn't look good for him, does it? No, Star. It doesn't look good. Three of them. An old guy, a younger dame, and a kid. The name they gave me wasn't Hillbrand, though. Yeah, it wouldn't be. Oh, here it is. Harris. That's what the old man signed. Talk different, though, you know. Little accent or something. Uh, that's Dutch. That his name is Harris. Yeah. Uh, well, look. Uh... Uh, paid the money, though. Cash. That's what counts, you know. Yeah, sure. Uh, how long have they been gone? Well, they left the office maybe uh, five, maybe ten minutes ago. The garage is in the back. I can check them. Hasn't been long, though. That's long enough to get lost, right? Uh, they didn't say where they were going by any chance. No, just wanted to rent a car for the weekend, they said. We don't give them no third degree like that, you know. They pay money, sign the liability papers, they get the car. That's our business. Yeah, well, when the car doesn't show up on Monday, that'll be your business, too. Hey, what's that about? Oh, it's just a feeling I got. Skip it. Oh, I was skipping nothing. Let me check back in the garage. Hey, they're still there in the car. Lynn's changing a tire for him. Let's go, Reynolds. Okay, Dutch. This is it. Mr. Stone. This is you... Mr. Reynolds, Dutch. He's with the FBI. No. No. Not now. No, no. Ah, Abby, Cooper. Peter, you must go quickly. You run. No one's going to run this time, Dutch. Right, Mrs. Kopeck? Oh. He's right, Papa. We don't run this time. <laughs> It was a beaten little crew that trooped into Reynolds' office ten minutes later. A scared kid, a broken old man, and a young woman who'd been running too long, and a reporter who didn't feel much like a hero. What will happen to my son? That depends on you, Mrs. Kopak. I want to tell the truth. I will tell the truth. That's all I'm looking for. Do you deny that you made an illegal entry into this country? I do not deny it. Mm-hmm. You're Carl Kopeck's wife, are you not? I am his wife, yes. You know of Carl? Well, we know he's a communist official in Czechoslovakia. Oh, but before that, do you know Carl Kopeck? Because before he became devoted to the cause of Stalin, he was as devoted to the cause of Hitler. If you know these things of Carl, you know more than I knew when I married him. More than I dreamed when our son was born. But you are his wife. You're you're still married to him. Legally, I suppose. When I discovered that I had married a Nazi, I took my son, a baby then, and fled. But each time my Carl and his friends would find me, bring me back, it was not pleasant, the, the punishment for running away. So you stayed? For fear of reprisal against my son, I stayed. Then the war was over, and the fear was gone for a time. But my Carl was not such a dedicated man as he was opportunist. He became a communist. And you started running again? Running, walking, crawling. It took time, a very long time. But finally, Peter and I reached America. To identify myself at your port meant certain recognition Carl or someone would find us. And I knew, because of Carl, that once your authorities discovered us, we would be deported back to him. Oh, for myself, I am willing to go back. You, you want to go back to him? I said I am willing. Send me back if you will, if you must. But, Peter... Will you deport him back to fear and torture, perhaps death? Can he not know your freedom? Must he be lost? The American approach is different, thank God. Reynolds could assure Abby of that. Her story and Pete's will be given a fair hearing. And once the immigration people have heard it and investigated, Abby has the right of petition. The decision on Abby and Pete finally rests with our Congress. And if their case has the merit it seems to have, she and Pete can one day become American citizens without fear of reprisal. Pete's young. He may make the Olympic swimming team yet. 
You know, now that I look back on it, maybe those political conventions of ours weren't so bad after all. At least 150 million Americans get the chance to watch the proceedings and judge for themselves. Copy, boy. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis. Tonight's transcribed story was written by Kathleen Height with music by Frank Worth. Featured in tonight's cast were Bill Conrad, Herb Butterfield, Jeff Silver, Vivi Janis, and Bill Johnstone. Listen next week at this time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness on NBC.